coming to you live from Las Vegas, Nevada. Today is Wednesday the 14th. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. Today is Wednesday the 14th of February 2018. If you can believe it, we are literally, literally six weeks, six weeks-ish into the new year. So, uh, Liz, can you hear me? Hello. We are six weeks into the new year, guys. Six whole weeks into the new year. Can you believe it? Well, my name's Dr. Wendy Dearborn, and I'll be your host for the next 60 minutes. And maybe 90 minutes, depending on what we do or what happens and where it all goes, I'll be your host for the next 60 minutes, 90 minutes. And you are live on My Life, My Choice which is a podcast, a radio show, a podcast that's all about me, it's all about you, it's all about us creating the lives that we want to live, creating the lives that we want to live, utilizing the power of your conscious choice so that you can create the life that you say that you want to live. But yeah, I hope you're having a wonderful, a wonderful Valentine's Day. And I hope you're actually enjoying it and you're going to do something nice and you're going to do something romantic and you guys are going to have a really, really good time. I'm actually hoping that that's that's going to be your day. Um, Once again, I'm not 100% sure what's going on with this whole system. This whole system seems to be a little jacked. And so we're going to push on through. And I really, guys, I really hope that you're able to hear me if you can hear me, um, please let me know. You know, if you if you know my number, text me, et cetera, et cetera, because I'm really hoping that this is truly going out, going out live. Um, I was hoping that we'd be able to connect with my co-host, but apparently that doesn't look like that is going to happen today. So I don't know. I don't. Once again, I don't know um, what what's going on. Um, But that being said, guys, welcome, welcome, welcome. Today we're going to be talking about are you running with scissors? Are you running with scissors, guys? Are you running with knives and scissors? And uh, apparently listening to what somebody has said, one of the the people in uh, the group, had said that there's a movie, and I kind of looked, running with scissors, I've never seen the movie, um, but I kind of looked, and um, there's a movie that does, it talks about uh, running with scissors, and it, it, from what I read from the synopsis, it's a, a doctor, she's a psychiatrist, and um, she, I think she has, a, I, think, I think she has a son with special needs or something, that goes to show how much I, how much I actually read, but um, I thought, you know, I looked I looked at the title, and I thought, oh, yeah, there you go. And it's something that, I'm, what I'm saying, long story short, I'm actually going to watch the movie and see what it was about. So I'm actually going to watch the movie and see what the movie was about, running with scissors. So, uh, guys, are you running with knives and scissors? As a child, how many times did you hear this from your parents, grandparents, teachers, siblings, friends, you know, adult, whomever, you know, the stranger on the, on the street. How many times did you hear an adult tell you, or even you as an adult, tell a child, don't run with scissors in your hand. Don't do it. And as kids, guardians always instructed us not to run with glass. Coming up in my day, it was knitting needles, sharp objects, and, of course, scissors, knives, and, of course, scissors. Now, why did they do this? Why, why were people always telling us, don't do this? Why were they always... It was because the potential to seriously injure yourself was... It was a reality. It was a serious reality. And not, not only injure yourself, the potential to actually do yourself a bodily harm that could truthfully kill you was imminent. So, you see... Not running with, with scissors, I'd say even as an adult, quite as, quite, quite as it's kept, you know, scissors, 
um, what do you call these things, ice picks, knives, it's st you still have the potential to hurt yourself. But hearing this as a child, what we have done, my opinion, is as adults, we're running with different, a different type of sharp object, a different kind of sharp object. And this object is no less lethal. You see, we're doing things that have the ability to undermine and cut us to the quick. We're doing things that have the ability to cut us to the core. You know, guys, you're running behind people who don't give a damn about you. People who don't give a damn about you and have passed their expiration date. You're running behind people who actually love themselves more than you love you. More than you love yourself. They love themselves more than you love yourself. And as a result, they're happy to use your, your energy. They're happy to use you to create their life's process. You are running with learnt behaviors that are creating planned obsolescence in your life. And we're going to talk about that in a bit. You're running with emotional blocks that compromise that compromise your personal growth and your ability to see what you want. You're running on fumes. And these fumes are other people's ignorance. Other people's beliefs, their ideology, their bigotry, their racism, their hatred. You're running on the fumes of other people. And you're running on fumes that are basically BS, they're bullshit. And believe it or not, guys, this stuff, everything that I've mentioned, has the ability or the potential to hurt you in ways that you couldn't even perceive of. It has the ability to hurt you in ways just as if you are running with broken shards of glass, sharp knives, and of course scissors. One of the things that I had put in the uh, synopsis, one of the things that I put in the synopsis was this. It's really important um, Hello? Can you hear me? Oh, loud and clear. <laughs> clear. Loud and clear. Okay. <laughs> Welcome to the neighborhood. <laughs> that goes the neighborhood, right? <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Well, well, let, let me just say this. Let me just say this. Well, no, first of all, I, I'll, I'll get back to that. So how are you, darling? You're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Um, um, yeah, I'm, no, I'm, doing, I'm doing well. How are you? Okay. Uh, not too bad, darling. Not too bad. Not too bad. It, it's nice that um, we're able to connect because I, I didn't actually think it was going to to materialize, um, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. I thought, sure oh, here, here, here comes another email. And I just <laughs> I didn't even materialize. But then I heard this. And I was like, yeah, because I, I, I didn't want to interrupt you, so I, I hit the microphone. And I thought, well, if she can hear it, I know she's going to say something because you don't yeah. want to talk to me. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember that for next time. I'm going to allow you to have to say, hello. hello. <laughs> no, 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 Luke. Day, you know. I she think, yeah. she, she crossed my mind. I want to say last week. Last week she crossed my mind. But yeah. But anyway, out, outside of that, darling, I was I was just reading the um, synopsis. And what I would say is, before I go back into the synopsis, is is simply this: um, the Asian style or Oriental style boxes, they're really stellar. Oh, you really like them? Oh, yeah, thank you. Yeah. I like those. Yeah. They, they, so they're kind of yoke, but you really like Oriental stuff, don't you? Yes, I do. So, That's right up yeah. my street, yeah. mate. Mm -hmm. I look at those. I'm like, oh wow. Ooh. <laughs> no, those mm -hmm. are really nice. No, Thank you. No, they're very, very, very nice, very nice, very nice, very nice, very nice. But anyway, where where I've got to is, um, guys, stop RSVPing um, to basically BS and crap that other people 
process you and your own that you've created. Crap that doesn't even fertilize your mind. And in addition to that, it's really important to stop blaming, laying the blame or the cause on him, her, them, as I have in the synopsis, Martians or whoever or whomever. And just as a caveat, guys, look, I'm not condoning anything that happened to anybody out there. I'm not saying that, um, you know, it's just deserved. I'm not saying that it was deserved or undeserved. I'm not saying any of that. And once again, I'm not condoning anything that has happened to anybody because wrong is wrong. Wrong is wrong. What I am saying to you is simply this. It's time to take a hard look at you and the choices that you have made that have brought you to the point where you are now. And I'm talking to the point where you find yourself in this minute, in this now. Because it's choices that you have made. I'm not saying that the choice is right, wrong, and again, I'm not condoning any action that has been perpetrated against you, your person, your family, um, you know, your peeps, your religion, your country, um, no. What I'm telling you guys is it's time to stand up for yourself and take responsibility, accountability, and ownership of your life and over the choices that you are making so that you can decide what you really want for your life and then invoke the universal laws to make it happen. So for me, are you ready to stop running? With shards of glass, sharp knives and scissors, are you ready? Now, despite having heard this as a child, maybe even as an adult, you may or may not have attempted to run with knives, shards of glass or or a glass and or scissors. And you may have, and you may have, run and fallen, and you may have run and not fallen. But in regard to what I'm talking about today and how I'm using this analogy, it doesn't mean that you came away uninjured. And once again, in the context that I'm using it today, what I'm saying is, as adults, we are running with a different kind of sharp object, but no less lethal. And where I'm going with this is, how many, how many people do you have floating around in your life, in, in your inner core, and or, and I say inner core, perhaps a better word would be, your inner circle, and on the peripheral of that circle, and as it radiates out, how many people do you have in your life that you know, you know that you need to let go of? And... And, and or, at the very least, create some serious bloody distance between the people, the people, the people aren't just limited to, you know, like your acquaintances, colleagues, your friends, your BFF, um, you know, or your, your sister or brother from another mother. I'm not just talking about that. That you may need to need to let go of or, or, or look at. I'm literally talking about hardcore family members. How many people in your family do you need to let go of in your life, or at the very least, create serious distance? And when I say serious distance, guys, what I'm talking about is create a dynamic where the fact that you think of them doesn't influence the way in which you feel about you perhaps in a negative way. But it doesn't influence the way you feel about you and the choices that you make. It doesn't make you feel angry. It doesn't make you feel this. It doesn't make you feel that. So, guys, I'm speaking about hardcore or the inner circle. I'm talking about your mom, your dad, your brothers, your sisters, your aunties, your uncles. I'm talking about your cousins. I'm talking about your children. Yes, guys, your children. I'm talking about your children's children. I'm talking about your grandparents. I'm talking about the people in your life. 
Okay, so how about a bit more up close and personal? And it does get more personal than that. I'm speaking about your spouses, your significant others, your lovers, your friends with benefits. And yes, I'm speaking about your exes too. And I'm also speaking about the relationship that you have created with you. How mm, you look, okay, guys, you know when people, people, I'll say people, places, and things, you know when they no longer serve you. And you really do know this. You, you may, you may um, sabotage every meeting that you agree to, um, to, 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 to go on with someone. Or the meeting may be sabotaged, perhaps not by you. And everything that you do, it sabotages it and it undermines it and it never, ever, ever turns out right. It never turns out right. Let's do lunch, let's do breakfast, let's do dinner. Or let's meet at this day, this time. And yet it never materializes. Now, might I add, you could, you could, um, you could meet with a hundred people in this time, and you meet with them, and it's never, it's never undermined. They're, they're, it's not sabotaged. One of the things that I would say here is, you know, you say you want to meet with somebody, and it's it, it, it's sabotaged, yada yada yada, and you could definitely throw in here that you know it. It, it's happened for a reason. It's been sabotaged for a reason. Yeah, you could throw that in there. And yes, there's, there's definite truth to that. You could definitely throw that in there. And I'd agree with you. Yes, it's happened for a reason. And the reason is you at some level didn't want it. Within your core essence, within the, the, the essence of you, the simple truth is that you didn't want it. Even if you haven't acknowledged this to yourself, guys, you know, that you, you didn't want it to happen. Oops, my glasses dropped off. Even if, you, even if you didn't acknowledge for yourself that you, um, consciously to yourself that you, you wanted this, unconsciously, your unconscious self is making it known. Unconsciously, the unconscious you, your unconscious self is making known that which you know to be true. That which you know to be true in your hearts of hearts, or in your heart of hearts, I think that's the better way, in your heart of hearts. You see, you know what's going on, and you truly do know what's going on, because even with your busy schedule, if your schedule, you know, back to back, whatever, whatever, you're doing this, you're doing that, you're running here, you're running there, you're flying here, you're flying there, you're doing all of this, you have time to fit in Tom, Dick, Harry, Larry, Peggy, Sue and Lou, you can fit everybody in. But this one person who lives a mile away from you, this one person who attends the same gym as you, the same clubs as you, blah, 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 you can never seem to, never seem to, 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 to fit it in. It never, it never materializes. And then you have the, you have the other side of the house, what you've called lives, you know, energy vampires, you know, you're with, you're in their company, and it's all you can do not to roll your eyes in the back of your head from being fatigued or being fatigued from being in their company. Or you're so distracted by not wanting to be in their presence. You know, you can't even concentrate on the words that are coming out of their mouth and what they're saying. And or your words can be so biting and cutting that you start hacking them up with your words. Or they're talking to you and in your head you you you're running this you're running this conversation in your head like, Oh, I don't know. Yeah, 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 whatever, whatever, whatever. You're always saying that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Blah 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 blah. Da, da, da. You're having this conversation about the conversation that you're having and it's not a good conversation that you're having. 
you know when it's time to let people go in your life. You know when it's time to let people go in your life. Liz, would you agree with that? Absolutely, Wendy. I, I, I think we, I think we all do. Um, we tend to a lot of what I was jotting down. You actually just said in in the last sort of like um, paragraph or so that you were talking. Uh, mm-hmm. We tend to we uh, like like you said. We 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 know we know and. And invariably what we tend to do, even though we have our own feelings, we think about, oh, the other person, how the other person would feel if we let them down. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. It all, and I think you all, it also depends on, uh, you just said it, what you think about the other person. Because you might think, okay, oh, well, yeah, it would be nice to meet up. But then in the back of your mind, you're thinking, oh, gosh, no, I yeah. really don't want to do that. Or I don't like the way she says this. Or, you know, blah, blah, blah. Or I don't agree with blah. And it's those sort of things that... Are the, um that come into play on a, on a subconscious universal level that actually prevent the meeting from taking place. So it's very much about how you, th- as you said, Wendy, about how you think about that other person. And mm-hmm. if you, and as you said, you know, if you have in particular thoughts, um, and it, it, that actually shows how powerful you are as well. I mean, oh, that, yeah. that is a power base. You know, if you're having those particular thoughts, then the universe will transpire to sort of like make mm-hmm. the reality what you want it to be. So, yeah, the meeting will not, you know, the reticence actually comes up and the meeting will not take place for whatever reason. reason um, exactly. but, but why it hasn't taken place is, I would say, is that, it could be kind of harsh, 100% down to the fact that that what you were thinking about specifically about that person and specifically about being in that other person's company. So yeah, and I agree with everything you said. It, it you know, um, and you know this. I, I'll, I'll say this. I'll say this. I I've been in that that predicament. You know, I've been in that predicament, and I'm sure that there are tons of people who may feel that way about me, you know, not wanting to be in my presence, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> but I know that I've been in that, that predicament. And all I'm thinking is, I, you, you know, you, you're looking at the clock and you're thinking, how the beat soon can I get out of here without it looking bad? Mm-hmm. And you mm-hmm. see, this is, because I'm going to go on to talk about this, and, and, and this is something that, that we do, this is something that we do, Listeners, this is something that you do. This is something that we do. And I know this is something that I do. I have to admit, though, it's not like it was when I was coming up back in the day. This is far and few between. This is far and few between. You know, one one of the, the, the things that I had put written down here, Liz, I made a notation. And in regard to that, you know, we we know when it's time to let people go. We know for all for all the reasons that you said. You know, there's everything that I said and everything that you said. Why we do, why we don't, and yet we hold on for dear life. We literally hold on for dear life. One because you know for all all the reasons that you said, Liz, and all the reasons that people think, we hold on for dear life, not realizing that in truth and honesty, it's your very life force. That is being that is seeping away. Energy that's being seeped away. Your energy is is I I, I don't know how to put it other than it, it it's like it's you know just like draining out of you. That that's that's the best way because that's the image that I see in my mind. Mm. And energy that energy with intention could be used somewhere else for something mm. that you want. And, you know, this, this, this is my kicker. I mean, I know I'm always saying this, guys. I know I'm always on this rant. But that energy could be used somewhere else. Don't you agree, Liv? Yeah, I, I know, absolutely, Wendy, absolutely. I, and I think the more um, we put things in the way of um because you know as the as the universe or your subconscious or yourself um creates uh circumstances that you actually don't want to be in uh the more we push it away it's like actually the more that it happens i don't know if that answered your question um yeah yeah it's it's just like it, it, it it's like putting a log on a fire isn't it 
you mm. know, it, the ember will burn down. And here you go. You put a log on a fire, you know. The ember burns down. You get out, and you can breathe now. And next thing you know, they're like, oh, well, do come over for dinner next week. And you're like, oh, crap. <laughs> and, you know, on top of it, you just talk to your whole business so they know you ain't doing that next week. <laughs> <laughs> and so what you do now is that that message, um, that message has gone out to the universe. That message has gone out to the universe. And that message has gone out with, I need a way to get out of this. Fix it. How am I going to do this? And as I keep saying to you guys, the how is the universal creator. The what is you. So how am I going to fix it? Once you put that out there, the how, the how's coming. And so, therefore, you will undermine or you will sabotage. That's what you're doing on here. But the universe is carrying out a direct, a directive from you. It's carrying out a directive from you. You know, so if you have somebody who you're always trying to um, make a date to meet up with and it doesn't happen, and like six months has gone by and it doesn't happen and this happens and that happened, blah, blah. I'm here to tell you that it's not meant to happen. It's not meant to happen. And be okay with that. In the same way, if, if, if you have um, clients who are forever trying to make an appointment or, or, or customers who are, ever, who are ever saying they're going to get this by this, blah, 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 and it doesn't happen. Believe me when I say to you, believe me when I say to you, they don't want it to happen, and at a level you don't want it to happen either. So be at peace with it. Be at peace with it. And not only that, as, go ahead, Liz. No, I say you can be at peace with it, or you can change the way that you're thinking to actually get the results that you want. You know, those are the two options that you have. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, hold on just a second. Just a second. <laughs> there you go. Right. Um, yeah, and not only that, decode it. I mean, as, as you started mm-hmm. out this year, Liz, we're decoding. That's what mm-hmm. I figured this year is about. Decode it. Mm-hmm. You know, guys, it's vitally important, and I really mean this, it's vitally important to um, recognize that there is a season or an appointed time for everything. And this is stated in whatever works you look at, whether it be metaphysical, it doesn't matter. Whatever works you look at, it's stated there. In the Bible, it's in Ecclesiastes 3.1. Um, and it, it, it literally talks about this, you know, and it includes but not limited to. And I'm paraphr- paraphrasing here. You know, there's a time to live, there's a time to die, there's a time to be born, and there's a time to die. There's a time for you to be um, filled with sorrow and a time for joy, a time to cry, a time not to cry. You know, a, 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 a time for hate and a time for love. There's a time for everything. And so it is with the people with whom you are choosing to associate with in your life. And actually, guys, not only the only people, Anything that you're choosing to have a relationship with, there's a season. There's a season. You know, and and there's a season. And when that season is done, so is the reason for them and or it being in your life. And, of course, you in this. And believe me, guys, this isn't limited to just relationships, like physical relationships, whether platonic, familial, you know, intimate, it is not just limited to that. Not at all. It's limited only with your with your sense of limitation. It is it it pertains to everything in your life. Your career, yes guys, your career or your job, your houses, your cars your clothes, your jewelry, your, your, your um, computers, any and everything that you have a relationship with has. And it will pass its or their 
sell by date. What happens, and you don't let go because that season has come and gone, and therefore the reason is no longer in motion or in being. There, there is a natural universal law that will establish itself. Be under no illusion. You are always, literally always, always doing what is best for you in the most expedient way. And I keep saying to you guys, it doesn't mean that it will always be warm and fuzzy. It does not mean that it will always be warm and fuzzy. What it means is that it's happening in the most expedient way for you. Yes, you might have cupcakes and rainbows. Or you might be able to see the cupcakes and rainbows or the, or or you might be able to feel the warm and fuzzies once you've been through it. And once you've been through it, you'll be okay. Because as the saying goes, you, you, you have truly got to go through it to get to it. That's what the saying goes. You have to go through it to get to it. So recognize, just in summary here, recognize, and this is very true, that there is a season for everything in your life. Some seasons are longer than others. Some seasons are lifelong. But there's still a season. And once the season is over, the reason for them being in your life and you in theirs has come to an end. Now, sometimes, let me just say this, sometimes it, it can be really hard. It can be really hard because, as I said in the synopsis, you know, you're running with emotional blocks that compromise your, 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 personal, your personal growth. And your personal growth to see with clarity, with conscious clarity, is what I should have put there, what you are wanting. One, one, of the, one of the analogies that I had jotted down here is in regard to the universal order of things and the, the, the universe um, establishing order. And I, I jotted it down this way. When you think about food that has passed its sell by date and is no longer and is no longer good. See now it's reading my writing, isn't it? And it's no longer good. Nature creates a way for it to move out of form, guys. Nature creates the way. Or moving out of form or to disintegrate. Freeing the space for something new to come into play. So when yeah. you think about food, bacteria is formed. And the food starts going off. And when the bacteria starts forming, you can't actually see it for the most part. When you see the bacteria forming, when you actually see it, it's already off and running. But when it starts to go off, something just doesn't even look right. You know when... You, you know, you know, like when you look at food and we say, I don't know if they say this in the United States, like it's gone to sleep, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and it just doesn't look right. And then it doesn't smell right. And then a little mold appears. And then it begins to putrefy. And what I mean by this, when you talk about this with yourself and relationships, what I mean by this is it literally turns in on itself and start to consume itself until there's nothing left, nothing energetically left to consume except a dust that is formed. And then eventually that will do its thing and vanish. Does that make sense, Liv? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, Wendy. I mean, there, there's also the thing of, you know, sometimes, you know, we, we do let go. Yeah, mm -hmm. but because um, you're saying about everything having a season, and there are times when we do we do let go, but then something or someone will come in to take the place 
of whatever it is, but that some someone will present exactly the same the problem. Same you exactly. hear it because people say, oh, well, why do I pick losers? Why do I pick, you know, habitual cheaters? Why do I always have the wrong job? Why have I always got the wrong car? You know, why do I always pick the wrong car? Mm-hmm. And that's like, you're kind of like showing yourself that, yeah, you are making the choices perhaps that you need to make because you are moving on, but the situation keeps coming back to you. So mm-hmm. therefore it's like, f- from, from my perspective, I think it's saying, okay, well, yeah, you're doing the right thing, but then on, you're doing it on a subconscious level. And, and what needs, what you actually re- need to recognize is the consciousness behind it. So you need, it needs to be done on a conscious level and not mm-hmm. a subconscious level. So exactly. it's like, you know, you put it out there and, and the universe kind of like does it for you. That's the subconscious way. But when you say, okay, right, enough is enough, that's when um, it's, a conscious, it's, it's a conscious decision. It's a conscious choice mm-hmm. that you make you're making mm-hmm. and I think maybe that's why it's sort of like we can find ourselves you know on this um this merry-go-round we're always we're, we always seem to be experiencing exactly the same thing over and over again like over, I, I, I mean you said about phrases and sayings you know over here it's like um um same meat different gravy yeah yeah you know? yeah um, yeah but it's it's, it's about because I think the whole point is to the whole point to I think it's a point. Mm-hmm. The whole point is to um, kind of like recognize your own power in the situation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and if we're not recognizing our, our, our own power, because everything has steps. You do, you have, everything has steps. So, I mean, until you get to a certain point where you, you are recognizing, appreciating your own power, it's very hard to move on to the next step, yes. Which, yes. which is why I was saying, you know, you have people who, you know, um, you know, wrong, always wrong job, always, in, but they always find themselves back in the situation. Yeah, they've reached the step where it's where they're ready to move on, but because they haven't recognised it on a conscious level, they find themselves back on that merry, merry-go-round. Mhm, mhm. Mm-hmm. And Liz, that, that well said, well said, well said. Um, especially, especially, you know, uh, same meat. No, uh, same meat. Um, different, gravy. Di- different gravy, you know, same meat, different gravy, which, which is so, so true. This is so true. Um, and meeting the same person in a different, in, perhaps in a different um, embodiment, but with all the same, with all the same characteristics, with all the same characteristics, you know, what what I have said about the food, this is something that really will happen to you. And actually what will be impacted is, as Olivia said, rightly said, you'll meet the same people, <laughs> the, the the same people in a different you you you'll meet you'll meet the, the 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 husband or the wife, the spouse or the significant other that you should have let go. You'll meet them in the form of your boss or your doctor or whomever. Somebody who it's not that easy to get away from, or it appears it's not that easy to get away from. You'll find that the universal, the natural order of things being disintegrated because it's something that needs to happen. You'll find that this will happen in regard to your health. Your health will be impacted. Your wealth will be impacted. And, of course, those relationships will be impacted. And while everything might show itself up in your life as a negative, the reality is it is a positive. Because as Olivia said, which is true, it's showing you something about you and it's showing you your strength. It's showing you what you need to do for you. It's showing you what you need to know. It's showing you what you can do in regard to a choice so that you can use your energy, so you can choose to use your energy in a different way. Yeah, I I think, and I think, Wendy, that um, a lot of times it it is that strength, it is that power that needs to be recognized on a conscious level. You know, mm -hmm. it's not not, not the sixth circumstance, it's actually not even the other person, it's your strength that needs to be recognized before you move on and 
most probably change your circumstances because you have changed by recognizing mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. you are actually a power force within your own reality. Because if you're not a power force, what you we're talking about, um, you know, running with scissors, what you're actually doing is cut, try, trying to cut yourself out of your own life, mm-hmm. cut yourself mm-hmm. out of your own reality, mm-hmm. and that can't mm-hmm. work. And that can't and it, work because, it, it, because the only reason why your exact your reality exists is because you do. Exactly. Exactly, Liz. Exactly. So cut, cutting, cutting yourself out of your own reality, um, as you say, is something that, that can't happen. Mm. That can't happen and it won't happen. Actually, you can never do that. Mm. You, you can never, ever, ever do that. Um, okay, all right. Thank you. Thanks, um, D. Um, I see my husband on the board. Can you just give me the heads up? Just text me and give me the heads up. Okay, all right. So anyway, uh, that being said, guys, that, that being said, if you are not letting people go, if you are not doing what you need to do, that means thank you, sweetheart. Oh, he came off the board. He must have thought I was going to put him on live. He's so funny, honestly. Um, if you are running with scissors, it means you're not letting people go. If you are not doing what is best for you, not letting things go as well, and places you may need to move. This is again, it's about you're the common denominator, and it's you who's in relationship to all this stuff. So it's about you doing what you need to do, and if you're not doing what you need to do, that means that you are running with scissors. You get to choose whether or not you put the scissors down. You get to choose whether you can delve into why you are choosing to hang on. Why you're choosing to hang on. And you can delve into it. And guys, you can keep delving and keep asking the question why. A question is infinite. Because there is always another question that can be asked of an answer. So you can keep asking the question, why and not do anything? What I say to you is you already know why. Or at least that's my belief. You already know why. So for me, it's about investing your energy, investing your time, investing your intention in what it is that you want to do. This is the better use of your time. This is how you put the knives and the the glass down and the shards of glass and the scissors down. This is how you stop running, by making a choice, something different than what you are already doing. In the synopsis I had put, You're running behind people who love themselves more than you love you. And as Olivia had done a show a couple of years ago about people using your energy to make their life the reality that they have seen, and they're going to use your energy to do that because you you don't see your life as being anything other than perhaps attached to them just because you feel a sense of guilt because They really work your nerves, but you're going to hang out with them anyway. Or because he beats you down, but when he's done, he cries and says he's sorry. Or they make you feel guilty because they're old and frail or because they're young and this. Whatever it is, you're running behind people who love themselves more than they love you or more than you love you. And the people you're running behind, They are going to use your energy. They are going to use your energy to create that which they want to create for their lives. That's what they're going to do. Well, in actual fact, I mean, if you're not using your energy, that's what you're saying anyway. You're saying, okay, well, what I'm doing is I'm giving you my energy so you can create at the expense of yourself. I mean, that's like... Uh, as, I, as I've said before, it, you know, that's, that's um, self-abusive. And it is. It's self-abusive. It really is. It is abuse. 
And it's worse than any abuse anybody could perpetrate against you. Self-abuse. And all abuse starts with self. All abuse starts with most people not doing what they know they should do. And you can add the word because. People spend an enormous amount of time trotting behind other people. I love that word, trotting behind other people. (laughs) (laughs) It, it, It conjures up this thing in my head, you know. So people spend an enormous amount of time trotting, <laughs> trotting behind people who at the end of the day don't actually have their best interests at heart or they will have your best interests at heart as long as it's self-serving. Everybody has an agenda. And really and truly, you know why they don't. You know why, why they don't and won't have your best interest of heart, in heart, excuse me, you know why they don't and won't have your best interest at heart? Because simply, you don't and won't have your best interest at heart. And so you can't expect anybody else to do more than you're going to do for yourself. But that doesn't mean that they will not use your energy to do for self. So again, you cannot expect anybody to do more for you than you will do for yourself. Because that's not going to happen. Yet they will do, they will use your energy and use it for them to do for self. Does that make sense, Liz? Yeah, absolutely, Wendy. Yeah, absolutely. The the other, one of the things I would say, uh, you know, is in like uh, the running with with scissors. Um, Sorry, trying to read my writing. You know, we can actually, because of, because of, social dictates and the way that we've been so socialized and nurtured we can actually end up um that that, that our life or us our, our, our true intrinsic self is cut into so many pieces fragmented. that would be we become yeah actually total totally defragmented yeah um and then and then what happens is like uh, the, the, you know there's a lack of self-worth because we're not on exactly. a stable fa- we're not on a stable foundation you know every, everything's in flux but we can take we can take a, i mean it, it's like finding a place to start and if you're fragmented i suppose I, I, i'm i'm thinking off the cuff here um, i suppose it doesn't matter which fragment you take but i think the most important thing is to take a fragment and if you have cut something up just say a piece of paper you know you have an option you know, you have an option to make, you know, a beautiful origami swan out of it, you mm-hmm. know. So th- the choice is yours. And then you can take another piece and do the same. And the mm-hmm. more you put the pieces together, you, you can join the pieces. They don't have to, they don't have to, I, I would say, maybe, maybe, maybe. I was going to say, I, I don't think it's like, a. it is like a puzzle, mm-hmm. but I don't think that, you know the puzzles is is definitive. You know one piece goes specifically there, and there's no way that it, it, no, nowhere else that can go. But I think with our reality, we can create the, more the edges. Yeah we, yeah, we can create the edges. We can create the the, the convex pieces and the um, concave pieces. We mm-hmm. can do that. Um, mm-hmm. So you can take you can take one specific you, if you you feel like your life is out of control you can take one specific piece of that that life or that 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 the element where you think you're 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 not in control or you feel um, depressed or despondent about it mm-hmm. and and work with just one piece at a time you know but mm-hmm. and as you know as Wendy said that you know this 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 year is about um, decoding. decoding. And if the, and you've got to, and when you've got to that point, personally, that's the perfect time to decode, because invariably that is when you are your most spiritual, right? Exactly. You've re- you've reached a place where it's like you're really in touch. You're mm-hmm. yeah. You're you're mm-hmm. really in touch with self, and that's when you can be your most powerful, uh, your most productive, and your most um. Yeah, you most connected, universally connected. Um, um, yeah, go on, go on, go on. No, no, because I, I totally agree with that. Um, 
because where I was going to go with this, when when you've you, you've hit the, the 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 pinnacle of fear, and um, you you make this choice to perhaps try to alienate yourself, which a lot of people do in many ways. Doesn't mean that you've locked yourself up in your house, but you 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 pull it, you create that distance that I was talking about. You actually create that distance. Yeah. Then is the time. That's the time when you need to do the work, because if the people, places, and things that you are you know alienating alienating yourself from, that you're alienating yourself from, or you're you're locking yourself away from mentally or what have you, if the things that they are doing are the things that you don't want. What this means is in the alienation process, you can be able, if you choose, you can be able to see what purpose the relationship has served and how the relationship can serve you moving forward as you step away. You see, it's a waste of your spiritual currency. It's a waste of your your frequency. It's a waste of, in my opinion, your time on earth to attach yourself to something that no longer serves you and to, to, to keep attached. Because as I said earlier, there's a natural universal order that will, it's not a case of it might, it will establish itself. Because if something no longer has energy going to it, it's going to go back to whence it came. A light bulb is only a light bulb when you flip that switch and that electricity runs juice to it. Other than that, it's just a piece of glass hanging out in the ceiling. And eventually, if it does nothing, believe me, guys, it will disintegrate. This is why, and we've said this several times on this on the show, this is why you'll pass a house. And that was the most, you know, stush house in the neighborhood. But the little old lady who lived there, she died, and, you know, the kid, she didn't have anybody to leave it to, and it went into probate, and people were fighting because this one wanted it, and yeah, yeah, yeah but, 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 but. And as a result, the house has remained empty for years. And what's happened? The house will disintegrate. The natural, universal order will establish itself and take that energy back so it can be used elsewhere. If you are running behind people who love themselves, more than you, whatever that means to you. And they are happily using your life up, your frequency, your spiritual currency, your energy with intention to get what they want, you're running with scissors. Because you're the one who's going to get cut. Are you running with learnt behaviors? And this is huge I'm just going to brush on this, but are you running with learnt behaviors that are creating planned obsolescence in your life? One of the things that we always talk about when we talk about learnt behaviors, because it's one of the easiest things to, to, to give an analogy of or to or whatever, as children and with your children and grandchildren, little ones, nieces, nephews, what have you, we always say, don't talk to strangers. Even if they have a little dog that's really friendly, even if they're trying to give you sweets, even if they say your mummy's over here around the corner calling you, don't talk to strangers and don't go with strangers. As adults, um, like even when my nieces were here, or my niece, yeah, yeah, when my nieces were here, they're going out. Stranger danger, stranger danger, and all of these things they they are beneficial. All of these things people people need to know. However, this learnt behaviour can create 
planned obsolescence in your life. If you don't, at a certain age, if you aren't are unable to to um, define or discern, that's the word, discern, with as much mm, discernment as you have, who you can talk to and who you can't. Instead of just carte blanche, I'm not talking to anybody. That will create in your life because it will move, mean that you will literally be unable to move forward in many aspects. Learned behaviors are doing things out of a sense of duty. Doing things when you're really, and I mean you really don't want to do them. But the sense of duty is outweighing that desire not to do it. And as a result, what, what builds up inside of you is this, this festering mass of whatever you're angry. You don't want to do it. You're bitter. You don't want to do it. You're twisted. You don't want to do it. But yet still you're doing it. You're ticked off. And anything that the that, that, that person or the people or what have you say, it doesn't matter. They could be making a joke. And everybody in the room besides you, there could be 30 people in the room and Everybody gets the joke. They're falling, falling down laughing because you just thought that they, 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 they've undermined you or they've just said something nasty to you and you because you don't know them and blah, 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 all this stuff. What is that? What is that? You see, the sense of duty and doing things that you don't want to do because I'm too old, because I'm too fat, because I'm white, because I'm black, because I'm young, because I'm old. These sort of things, when you put that, that emphasis before something you want to do, you've already started your obsolescence. It has become obsolete for you. Something doesn't work. When a thing that you are using no longer works. Motor cars, they used to be built to last, which is why you can see some of them cars from back in Henry Ford's day when he started and all of them. You can see them. They were built to last. You see houses, houses that have stood through hurricanes, tsunamis, tidal waves, you name it, earthquakes, and that house is still standing. Yeah, it might have needed a little patching up here and there, standing, because it was built to last. What they create now, what is created now today, is created from a capitalistic market or a, a, a capitalistic um, manufacturing or whatever phrase you want to use. It's capitalistic. And so now, planned obsolescence is in everything that we buy. Everything that we buy, everything that we do. The digital age, they have used it for planned obsolescence. You know, every time you look around, um, what do you call it, uh, um, uh, Apple, the iPhone, they're updating, they're doing an ISO, whatever you call it. You, uh, actually, let me just say this while I'm on this planned obsolescence and, and the telephone. Running my, my credit cards and everything, I, I I run it, you know, digitally. And I was using my phone. And what happened was my my, my the, the the actual little square thing, although I don't use square, but the, the square thing that you slide the card on, it wasn't connecting properly. And so I phoned the lady, or should I say I phoned the company, yada, yada, yada. But, 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 and they said, well, do this, do that. And I'd already done all of that because, you know, you go online and you can find most anything an answer to almost any question that you have. So I know I've done all of that. And the lady said to me, she said, ah, do you know what? You're going to have to update your phone. 
And I took a breath because the immediate West Indian in me wanted to tell her about herself. <laughs> and I took a breath and I said, okay. I said, all right, I got it. Planned obsolescence. And um, I believe what she said was no. Um, it's a, uh, uh, what do you call it? Growth. It's a, e- e- no, evolution or something like that. Mm-hmm. But everything was working. Everything was working. And so, of course, now I need to get another phone that cost me, what, five, six hundred dollars or what have you. Then I needed to get more equipment, the new equipment that cost me nearly two hundred dollars. And so it goes on. And you've got you've got maybe about five. They used to be good. It used to be about seven years. But the year is the gap's closing. This is planned obsolescence. And this is what happens when we use learnt behaviours that no longer serve us over and over again. Einstein said the definition of madness is doing the same thing over again and expecting a different result. This is planned obsolescence. Whatever you're doing will not work. It's elite. What you are doing and what you are using is obsolete. It is no longer functional. I was speaking about a sense of duty. And we run with emotional blocks. And these emotional blocks compromise our, our ability to grow. They compromise our ability to see exactly what it is that we want. Yet, believe it or not, the emotional blocks, the emotional blocks tell us what it is that we want. The emotional blocks of feeling hurt, the emotional blocks of um, feeling neglected, the emotional blocks of, of, of feeling, um, what do you call it, um, uh, like uh, uh, rejected, I was going to say rejected, abandoned, there you go. The emotional blocks of feeling rejected and, and, and abandoned and all these sort of things, these are blocks that we run with. And these blocks that we run with, they actually prevent us from growing personally, from personal growth, if we do not look at the block and decode it. Mm. If we don't look at the emotion that we're, if we don't look at the emotion that we're running, the anger, the fear, the resentment, Mm. abandonment, if we don't look at that, we keep running these emotions. Well, one of the things that you said, Wendy, was um, everything goes back to source, okay? Mm-hmm. Um, and whatever you do, say, think, or feel, it's you. It's it's an essence of you in a vibration form, mm-hmm. which means you are the source. So if you're feeling, um, you know, you said a little while ago, an angry, festering mess of whatever, <laughs> <laughs> whatever, that's actually what's going to come back to you. It won't be, it, it, it'll measurably be in a totally different form, but because it comes back to source, it's going to come back to you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's, mm-hmm. and I'm not saying, oh, as a form of punishment or where and it's, a, it's yeah. not a form of punishment. It's actually just showing you sort of like how it is or what you can do if you choose. And mm-hmm. it's also showing you how bloody powerful you well, are you to are. be able to create it. And you see, this is it. This, this, this. Uh, and a lot of what what we experience truly is, as Olivia said earlier, it boils down to us seeing our own magnificence and knowing without a doubt that if I can create all of this over here, what happens when I turn my energy to creating with intention, that which I really want. And you see, the people who are truly able to manifest in this way, they have this understanding. They have that understanding. You know, when, when I think about the, like the book, The Secret, and the other stuff that's out there, there are many nuances, which, which I'm grateful for because it's led me to do what I do today. There are many nuances that have not been explained 
There are many nuances. You know, they come out and they say, oh, if you believe it, you will receive it. Uh, the nuance is, in order to believe, every emotional or every sense that you have, including your sixth sense, if you can get it that way, has to be engaged and has to be attached to what it is that you say that you want. But they say you just have to believe it. They don't tell you about how to wade through stuff. You know, they'll tell you, you go to, go to um, a, what's it, you, you go to a seminar, you know, and they'll, they'll have you standing up and wave your hands in the air like you just don't, <laughs> <laughs> like you just don't care. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, you know, it's stuff like that. And it's stuff like that for me, um, I, I find on a personal level, on a personal level, I find that so, it's like, no, guys, no, give the people the information. You know how you got there. And for the most part, when I listen to people in their interviews, I know they know how they got there. I know that they know that there's more. And I know that they know that they're not telling it. You see, because they're going to tell the next piece in another book. And then the next piece in another book. But what they don't realize is at an intrinsic level, truth recognizes truth. And so therefore, their first book will be a bestseller. And thereafter, they're scrambling to make the second book a bestseller. Because the first book is the most authentic part of them. And thereafter, it's become a money-making beast. And they, they're going to hold you by the short and curly. They're going to put that, that, that carrot in front of the donkey. <laughs> they're going to put that carrot out there. And what they but don't realize is people, people, people aren't stupid. But one of the things, Wendy, is um, you were saying that uh, you said about the actors and actresses. Um, I can't remember exactly what it was you said, but um, one of the things that came to me at that time was, you know, you'll hear people say about themselves or of themselves, oh, I'm really lucky, you know, and that's that's a prime example of, you know, re that them recognizing their power on a conscious level. level. And, mm -hmm. you, and you will notice that they will um, get on in life because of because they feel that you know exactly. they will be lucky you'll hear someone say oh you know i'm really pretty even though you know it's debatable <laughs> but they, okay. but they but they recognize their aesthetic beauty and they'll get on in life because exactly. of it regardless of what anyone says you know you're talking about the people you know doing the book the first book being authentic and the rest being sort of like money making things you'll pick, you, you 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 know you see people and and they'll say oh i'm an entrepreneur Right, mm -hmm. and that's a prime example of it. Uh, it, it they've done the the first thing um, intu um, intrinsically, and it's it, it's real. Okay, the others are real too, but there's a connotation behind it, mm -hmm. and the and the connotation behind it is that they are an entrepreneur. They're in it for for the money. Mm -hmm. So whatever, th but they recognise their power because the fact they say I'm an entrepreneur. So. It's like I was saying before, it's about actually recognizing the power behind the things that you do, mm -hmm. you know, it, on a conscious level. It has to be on a conscious level. Amen. Because, because when it's not, when it's subconscious, it's, it's just like your heart ticking or the blood flowing. Exactly. You're not, you're not really aware of it. It's something that even though it keeps you alive, but it's something that you need to, it, it, if I think particularly if you are feeling about yourself in a detrimental way. It mm -hmm. Actually, even if even if you're not, even if you think you know, oh, you're the bee's knees. Um, oh gosh, do you know what? Um, it's really important to recognise the power within yourself. That's I, I can't remember exactly what I was going to say, but on a conscious level, it's really important. And it is. It, it, it's totally different from doing it on a subconscious on a level. Exactly, um, because your sub your your subconscious again works very differently to your conscious self. 
It works very differently, and it works very differently with the universal energy. It's totally different. Your subconscious self is truly tapped into your emotional self in a way that your conscious self is not tapped into your emotions. But that's a whole other show by itself. That's a whole other show by itself. Running with your emotional block, again, um, will definitely hinder what it is that you want to do. And your emotions, once again, you emote. You emote. What happened? You emote. And emote is all about you expressing or showing. So understand, guys, running with emotional blocks, this will compromise you and your growth and everything that you want to do. However, this compromisation, if that is a word, um, it is to show you something. And this is what this is all about, guys. It's about you choosing to take control of your life. Take control of your life. In the synopsis for the show, I said, you know, you're running on fumes of other people's ignorance, their bigotry, their, their racism, their biases, their beliefs, their ideology. And all of it, guys, all of it is bullshit. And all of it has the potential to hurt you. To hurt you at a core level. Just as if you're running with broken glass, knives and scissors. And not, not getting into conspiracy theories, but people, and I say but, which just negated everything I said, but that being said, people listen and play into what the government are saying, what political parties are saying, what, what religion is saying, what you know, the era that we're living is saying, what current trends are saying and all of this. And I am not saying, guys, not to be aware of what's going on. Whether in your government or within the country or within other countries, I am not saying that. Saying, guys, is simply this. You need to stop our S-V-P-ing. You need to stop saying, yes, I'm going to attend this particular party and I'm going to allow this particular event and these people and these scenarios and these ideologies and these beliefs to impact my world. RSVPing to crap that doesn't even fertilize your mind. And when I say fertilize your mind, I mean give you food for thought so that you can expand. Food for thought so that you can stand in your magnificence and recognize the powerful being that you are. In the word it says, don't you know that ye are God? How could you not know this? So caught up. We get so caught up in all this stuff and we blame him and we blame her. We blame them. And as I said here, we blame the Martians. We blame the aliens. We blame global warming. We blame acid rain. It went from acid rain to global warming. Because people realized that acid rain was not true. We blame the, 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 the sun. We blame this. We, we blame, blame, we blame, blame with David Icke, the lizard people, you know. Exactly. <laughs> we, ex- exactly. We, we, we blame the lizard people. Or we blame the Illuminati. Or, mm. or you know, we blame mom, we blame dad. We blame the fact that we were born black, white, Indian, Chinese. We blame the fact that we don't speak English. We blame the fact that, you know, we, 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 we what were they, what are they called? Um, the Untouchables. You know, who believed that? You believe these 
untouchable, guess what? You'll be a people who want to touch you. We blame all of this stuff. We blame our life causations on all of this stuff, not realizing we are the causation of the life that we are living. We hate this political party and we hate that political party. What are you a party to, to yourself, that you hate about you? Because that's what, that's what, that's what you're showing. That's what's showing up on your screen of space. That's what's showing up on your screen of life. That's what's showing up for you as you are living through life. You see, because you're running with scissors. And in that result, in, in that regard, you're you're running not only with your scissors, but when you're running on the fumes of other people's ignorance, you're running with their scissors too. So guys, for me, now is the time for you to choose, if you want, to stop running with knives, scissors, shards of glass, and things that have the potential to seriously injure you physically, mentally, and emotionally. Use your energy effectively. Use your energy. Think about the things that you don't want or think about the things that 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 have happened, not to rehash everything, but to enmesh everything that has happened in a way that will allow you to create the life that you want to live. And if it's not going to do that, then you have the ability to choose to let it go. Put it down. Put that glass down. Put those knives down. Put those scissors down. And now start running. You know, stuff that's gone on in your life, and the thing that just really flashed into my mind, uh, you had been talking about paper earlier, Olivia, and, you know, the cutting of paper and, you know, turning it into a swan using origami, et cetera, et cetera. What flashed in my head was, for all the stuff that's gone on, you know, do it like um, paper mache. Create something new out of it. Or, as the word says, this is about going to the potter's house. This is about, that's Uncle Neville. Actually, no, he got that from the Bible. Let me phrase it that way. You go and you create something new. Create something usable. Decode what is going on with your life. You know what it means. You have to sometimes ask, because when you ask of self, self, what are you trying to show me? Yourself knows that you have made that conscious decision, and you have your own undivided conscious attention. And self will answer you. Won't be always warm and fuzzy. You know, you can keep saying next until you hear something you like but it won't be always warm and fuzzy. So, guys, as as we wrap it up, if you find yourself enmeshed with people, places, and things, and you know in your heart of hearts that you no longer serve them and they no longer serve you, decode it. Ask yourself, as I've just said, what is this showing me? Figure out what you have learned from this experience. What has this experience taught you? And what is it? What is it teaching you? What has this experience taught you? And what is it teaching you? And then what does it look like to put down these sharp objects, to put down these knives and scissors so you can move forward at a leisurely pace quicker pace or at a run, knowing that you can do this without being hurt. It's your time now, guys. You figure it out. 
You are your responsibility. You are your your you 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 have ownership of your life. You are accountable for it. I cannot be accountable for your life. I can't take ownership from your life. I can't take responsibility for your life. But I can use your energy to do my life. You know, when you were saying about um, uh, running with other people's scissors, Mm -hmm. yeah? Um, And I was thinking, we actually, I I would say we don't actually run with them. We run into them. them. Come on, preach. We actually allow them to impale us. Mm-hmm. And that puncture wound, that puncture wound, it, that puncture wound is draining energy, energy. until until mm-hmm. actually we decide to we, to sidestep these things, you know, to sidestep their scissors, which mm-hmm. actually is their wants and their needs for themselves, not for you. Exactly. Well said, Liz. Well said, darling. Well said. And you know, stab me with with your scissors. <laughs> <laughs> Did not stab me, <laughs> Natasha, darling. I'm not having none of it, none of it, <laughs> none of it, not as well. So no, so no, and well said, Liz. Well said, well said. Um, guys, life is at an absolutely amazing thing. It's amazing. It's unfolding for you. It's unfolding for you. It's happening for you. The things that we find that we don't like in life are things that are necessary for our growth. It's all about getting our attention. If you think about a child, and I'm not saying that we are children, if you think about a child and you're trying to get this child's attention and this child ain't having it, and if you clap the child twice, you have the child's attention, okay? It's like that. This is, this is the, I think, the nature of who we are. It's the nature of us. We are always hopefully optimistic, and I think that is wonderful, a wonderful trait to have. As long as we are consciously, hopefully optimistic, mm. and therein lies the word. It's about being conscious. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's about being conscious. And because said someone, that earlier. because someone who's actually pessimistic has to be, um, what's the conscious. word, Wendy? No, no opposite of pessimistic optimistic. they have to they have to be optimistic to recognize their pessimism exactly. yeah they exactly. Could be. exactly 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 yeah exactly um and, and and that that's one of the things i had said uh last week you know the the universal law of opposites is exactly that you you it, it will show you how far you have come mm. And that's one of the, you know, the universal law speaks to, the universal law of opposites actually speaks to the extremes in your life and the need for them. And you have to have them because they, they provide us with contrast. And those contrasts and those parallels or contrasts and parallels show us the measurement of how far we've come. Yeah. Otherwise we wouldn't know. And you know, even when it, another thought that occurs to me, even with someone who is supposed to be pessimistic, mm-hmm. um, oh shit, you know what? It's gone completely out of my mind, but I was going to say. No, because, and, and you know what? I was thinking it, but I didn't jot it down, and then I started listening to what you were saying, and it just, um, it just completely went. went. It went, it went, it went, it went. No. No, guys, um, life is a wonderful thing. Um, I think that for everyone, it's about the choices that you choose to make. It's really important that everybody, many bodies might not embrace the choices that you make. They might not be popular. But as long as they're the right choices for you, eventually, if it matters to you, eventually other people will see that, yes, what you what you have done was the best for you, and not only for you, but for them too. This is why many scientists have been shunned and, and you know ostracized in the whole nine yards, but they've kept on, and as a result, they've they've, they've you know had wonderful 
marvelous, marvel scientific inventions, but they believed in them when others didn't. Don't worry about what other people have to say, or let me put it this way, you listen to them and you take from it that which will assist and support you in moving forward. You leave that which will be like cement, cement boots that has you sinking the waters that you are traversing. Don't, don't, don't do it. <laughs> don't you do it. But anyway, what what, what what I was going to say, Wendy, was that um, you know, uh, talking about pe- um, people that are pe- pessimistic, they actually get what they want. Okay, yes, yes. even when they 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 get something good, mm. when something good happens, they 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 turn it round to find, let's say, the negative. Mm. But what the universal message is for them is that they are an amazing optimist. Amen. Because they're making, they're, they're actually, and, and they're creating their reality on a foundation, on a base, on a basis of optimism. That's it's right. a very good basis to be on. It's just how it's just they haven't yeah, consciously exactly. recognized what it is that they're actually exactly. doing. Exactly, exactly. So that being said, guys, we're going to wrap up. I hope you've enjoyed the show. You've been listening to an episode of My Life, My Choice, and we've been talking about are you running with knives and scissors? If any of this has resonated with you, put down the knives, put down the scissors, and focus your attention on what you want. So, Liv, thank you, darling. Thank you, guys. Love you, sis. Love Love you, you guys. I will not be here next week. We won't be here next week. But we should be here the week after. And I believe we're going to be talking about it's not what you know, it's how you apply it. So until next time, guys, I'm Dr. Wendy Dearborn, and my co-host has been... Olivia Lashley from London in the UK. And on that note, we're going to go out on Dub Spirit. Can you play some funky music? Yeah, you're funky on that. <laughs>